anyone in the world, including you, can ride a driverless taxi right here in San Francisco. So I'm trying it out, and I'll tell you right now, it is incredible. But before we talk about what it's like to ride in one, driverless cars have killed people. We'll get there, but for now, just remember that the cover-up is always worse than the front. They've been at the center of many controversies, from embarrassing to terrifying. And who's behind these self-driving car companies? Are they safe? Why not just take an Uber or a Lyft? And what does the future hold for these weird-looking cars? First, we've got to address the elephant in the room. There were two companies operating driverless taxis in San Francisco. Now there's only one. Cruise lost their operating permit when one of their cars was involved in a fatality. But that's not why they lost their license. It was the cover-up. A couple months ago, a car hit a pedestrian, throwing that person under a Cruise autonomous vehicle. The Cruise car freaked out and attempted to pull over. That dragged the pedestrian 20 feet and stopped with that person under the tire. Apparently the cars just aren't designed to handle this kind of thing. Horrible, I know, but we're just getting started. To their credit, Cruise did quickly notify authorities, but this is where things go from bad to worse. These cars are covered in cameras. That's how they work. So there's obviously footage of this incident, but Cruise attempted to hide that from the DMV. The cover-up is always worse than the crime. And that's why if you wanna take a self-driving taxi in San Francisco today, Waymo is your only option. Let's try it out. So it looks like the price is actually a little bit cheaper than an Uber or a Lyft. Now I've picked a short ride, but it is a doozy. We're headed up some really steep, narrow, and now wet streets to the highest point in San Francisco. It just rained outside. In fact, it's still raining a little bit. We're headed to Christmas Tree Point on top of Twin Peaks. Looks like it's gonna take 13 minutes for this Waymo to show up. I'm supposed to get picked up right here. Let's see how that works. I've had some issues with this in the past. Just waiting for the Waymo. Every Waymo ride starts in the same way, and that's with waiting. A lot of waiting. But if you can put up with that, you will be rewarded. While we're waiting for this thing to arrive, you should know who's actually behind these companies. Cruise is headquartered right here in San Francisco. They're financially backed by automotive giant General Motors. Cruise was started in 2013 by this guy, who previously co-founded Twitch. Kyle stepped down after the whole cover-up thing and posted one of the saddest tweets, or X's, I don't know, that I've ever seen. And now GM is picking up the pieces. That bad news for Cruise is actually great news for Waymo. They started out in 2009 as the Google self-driving car project. You may have heard of Google, the fourth largest company on earth. And while they're the only game left in town right now, they haven't won the autonomous car market just yet. Some limitations in the way their cars work may open the door for competitors. Looks like my car is almost here, so we'll talk more about what the future holds in a little bit. So you unlock it with the app. Hi, Adam. Weird. Hello, from Waymo. As we get going, just give us one minute to cover Heading a to few Christmas riding tree tips. Point. This feeling is just, just so strange. I can't even begin to describe it. I can play whatever music I want. I can change the temperature. Nice. I can call support if I need to. I can bail. So far, this thing is doing shockingly well. It's handling these wet, narrow, tiny streets with no problem whatsoever. And these streets are no joke. Let's see what happens if I take off my seatbelt. It has been a couple months since I've been in one of these, and I've gotta say, it is a lot better now than it was the last time I was in it. The sound system in here is very nice. It is a Jaguar after all. It does kind of feel like I'm being watched, and maybe that's because I am. There are a lot of cameras looking inside of this vehicle. Well, it didn't handle that super well. That's where we're going up there. The one interesting part of this is we did not take the most direct route here. Maybe that's because it's easier for the car to drive on some of these other roads, but we've taken some pretty tricky pathways, so I don't really know what's going on. Your arrival time is continuously updated. There are plenty of spots to pull over. I guess we like this one. Great. No Please make sure it's clear before exiting. Let's talk about that ride. There are some obvious pros and cons of this thing. First, is it safe? It certainly felt safe, safer than a lot of Ubers I've been in. I hinted at this earlier, but there have been some pretty hilarious safety issues with these cars. These are the three funniest. Waymos were getting stuck on a dead end street because they couldn't figure out how to turn around. Some days there were up to 50. There have been a few viral videos of cops trying to pull these things over and the car completely ignoring it. And my favorite, coning. 
Apparently, if you put a traffic cone on the hood of one of these cars, they can't operate. It's a little jarring. It accelerates really quickly at stop signs and stoplights. Not gonna win any races though. In general, these cars are very cautious. They simply are not going to drive aggressively. That's a good thing most of the time, but sometimes it can be a little annoying. Some things are better, some things are worse, and a lot of things are just different because there's no driver, which is actually my first pro. There's no one to upset. You definitely do not have to be outside when the car shows up. You can take your time getting in and out. You can roll down the windows. You can play music as loud as you want. It's your car. You can do whatever you want within reason. My next pro is that the price is actually a little bit cheaper most of the time. You can occasionally find some discounts on Uber or Lyft that make it a few bucks cheaper, but Waymo in general is pretty cheap. And over time, the cost of technology just keeps going down, so I would expect this gap to widen further in the future, not get closer together. My last pro, undoubtedly the biggest of the three, is the consistency of the experience. I've taken about 10 rides in Waymos, and every time, it's pretty much the same. The same service, the same car, the same tourists looking at you every time, and that is really nice. When you get into a ride chair, it's a toss up pretty much every time. Of course, I have had some incredible ride share experiences, but you never really know what you're gonna get. With a Waymo, you know just what to expect. Which leads me to the cons. If you need help with luggage, car seats, or anything really, you're out of luck. You're on your own in this car, and that's because there is no driver. Which leads me to my second issue, the speed. These things are just slow. Now don't get me wrong, the driving is very impressive, but you will wait a long time to get picked up in most situations. It feels like they aren't taking the most direct route, which adds a bit of time as well. And they drive very cautiously. Great for safety, not so great in a city that is known for driving just a touch aggressively. And my final issue, once again saving the biggest for last, is the pickup and drop off experience. Now this range is from a little strange to very bad. On this ride, things went pretty well. I was picked up and dropped off in roughly the same spot that they said I would be. But I have had some pretty big issues with this. Well, let me show you. There goes my ride. Apparently it didn't like the place it told me. So now I'm chasing it down a few blocks to try to get in the car. There it is. Sometimes they decide the place that they told you to get picked up isn't quite right. Now, let me be honest, this was a very busy touristy area, but the experience left something to be desired. That says something about being the highest point in the city. So what does the future hold for driverless taxis? There are some issues that may prevent Waymo from expanding. For years, people drove these cars around with all their sensors and cameras everywhere in San Francisco. They did this to create a detailed visual map of the city. So these things work great in San Francisco, but they don't work anywhere outside of the city. There is, however, another company that's had cars driving all around the world covered with cameras and sensors for many years. Any guesses? I'm thinking about Tesla. There have also been years of rumors about Apple getting into this market, and Microsoft has been very quiet. And those are two companies with an awful lot of money and talent. But for now, riding in a driverless taxi is just one of many incredible San Francisco experiences. And if you want to see more incredible Bay Area experiences, check out these videos and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Ooh, we're about to run this yellow light. Oh! Nice move.